This structure frees you up to go explore all day. No more dependence on somebody else for your nutrients. No more dependence on somebody else for your health to tell you what's healthy. You determine what's healthy for you. These are tools. This is kind of bridging the gap to get people closer to the source of their food, yeah. putting in real food, making choices and, and choosing things that serve you, choosing relationships, choosing relationships with food, choosing relationships with people, choosing relationships with products that are serving you. That's Jessica Bell, and this is episode 287 of Wellness Force Radio. Wellness Force Radio, where we discover the physical and emotional intelligence to live life well. You can have the same brain states as someone who's done an hour of meditation every day for 40 years. There's a lot of losses that we go through, so the ability to be able to cope with those losses is very important to build skill in it, because loss will happen. You can be fatigued and depressed, right? So then the challenge is, what's the best order of operations for trying to help someone identify what the root cause of their problem is? Do you like yourself when you look in the mirror? What are you saying to yourself? What do you think about other people? How do you look at the tree? You know, you have to have spiritual courage to really grow spiritually because if you really want to take guidance from your soul, you have to be ready to realize that many of the things that you're asking for guidance on, your ego has some kind of an addiction to or an investment in. What's up, everybody? This is Josh Trent. Today on the podcast, We're talking with my friend and entrepreneur, Jessica Bell. She also happens to be a mom and she's the co-founder of ReVessel, the creators of the Adventure Kit. Now it's pretty rare that I bring on a guest to just talk about a single product, but this was so big. This means so much to me. This is such a larger conversation. This Adventure Kit, this sustainable food storage, it's far just beyond a multitasking lunchbox engineered for the modern world. This is actually the spark, how we guide our health practices the food containers we use, the types of foods we put in those containers. This is the ripple effect, my friend, of a healthy and sustainable world. When it comes to the foods that we eat and how we store our food, the important part about this is how that leads to regenerative agriculture, the treatment of our oceans, our mountains, our skies, our streams, this planet to no surprise. This is a dark topic, but it deserves the light. It deserves solutions. This planet has a virus. And it's uncomfortable to talk about it, but we get to go there because it seems that we have the virus that's coming from a hidden place, but we know that the earth's virus is actually humankind. We're sick ourselves, obesity and disease and all these different pieces are coming up in the world. The food that we eat and the plastics and the pesticide that cover our food is actually the clues. You know how Tony Robbins says success leaves clues? Well, the plastics and the pesticides, all these things that are found in our environment, these are the clues towards the solution. It starts with your very next meal. It's super easy sometimes. It blows me away how we think we don't have the power as a humanity. But by choosing the types of foods we put in our mouths, this is actually going to directly impact our environment and global warming. And this is actually data from the NASA government website. We know that scientific evidence for warming of the climate system is unequivocal. The planet's average surface temperature, this is the crazy part, it's risen to about 1.62 degrees Fahrenheit since the late 19th century. This change, driven largely by increased carbon dioxide and other human-made emissions, these are being released into our oceans and to the atmosphere. And this is why this show is so powerful. This is the solutions that we're talking about, the renewal of the way that we store our food by first renewing and reveseling ourselves. In this episode with Jessica, we're going to talk about why she created this movement around the Adventure Kit and her company Revessel to make food storage more sustainable and non-toxic. This is actually what's going to help families and men and women heal their bodies by cutting down the amount of plastic that they consume and also the phytoestrogens that come from plastic. This is the crazy part, actually. Jessica brought up a research study that was done. We in America are consuming a credit card worth of plastic. A credit card worth of plastic. Imagine that. Like microscopically, we're eating this every week. Can you believe there is a credit card going into our bodies and it's all found by particles of plastic in our food? This is why it's so important we start using silicone, wood, and stainless steel for our food so that less of this plastic and this crud gets into the ocean. I mean, look, we all know change takes time, but it starts with the time that we have right now. So in this movement and in this show, we're going to explore the practical solutions of food storage, 
We're going to talk about sustainable agriculture, what it was like for Jessica to heal her own health journey first, which was the fire behind her co-founding Revessel, and so much more. You can also watch this video, by the way. It was a Facebook Live where Jessica, we went on there live. We linked it to the blog today. It's always found at wellnessforce.com. This episode is wellnessforce.com forward slash 287. Also, do not forget, Jessica was generous enough to give us a big discount for the pre-launch on the Adventure Kit. You'll see that I actually had my gut check moment on the show when I was like, wait a minute. I use glass containers, but they have plastic lids. <laughs> and then I'm putting warm food in the plastic lids. This is, we can do better. I can do better. We all can do better. Thank you, Jessica, for giving us 10% off the Adventure Kit. If you're looking for a practical, sustainable, hot, cold storage unit, you can take in your backpack to the beach or the mountains. You can also bake with this thing. This is pretty incredible. How many containers can you bake with and then take that same dish to the beach? I have not seen this before. You can have this. Go to revessel.com, R-E-V-E-S-S-E-L. Use code wellnessforce 10 and you get 10% off the already early bird price, but you gotta do this before July 31st. Go to revessel.com, use the code wellnessforce10. Jessica is giving you 10% off the already early bird price before July 31st. Now, let's take a deep breath, and let's drop in to talk about solutions. Yes, we explore the dark, but here comes the light with Jessica Bell, the founder of Revessel. I was telling you before we started this, this is a piece of artwork and it's earth, wind, water, fire. And it didn't occur to me until you came into the studio. I, I thought, wow, we're doing a show about the power of our food choices and food safety and sustainable agriculture. And we're just happening to sit by earth, wind, fire, and water. Sure. And I thought, that's really cool. It is cool. Like, what do you feel about where you sat down and what this means? Well, is this brand new? Is this the first time that you- No, okay. it's been there. Okay. But you're like more special. This fits you way more. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great. Well, I love it. I'm inspired by all of those forces, and I think it's amazing. Earth and the water. I, you know what? Yeah. I'm so drawn to, you know, when I when I have a moment of angst and tension, I'm called to get by the ocean, get my feet in the sand, go run, go move. You know, and, and sometimes that may be, you know, just a garden or being just where you live in these you, eucalyptus so trees are huge and amazing but getting yeah. my feet back in the soil and deep you know deep in the sand and that calms everything that you know exposure to ions and that negative ionization is just incredible yeah we jumped on the trampoline a little bit before we came on here and this the the physical body it's it, i'm so excited to have this conversation with you this has been like 3 months in the making maybe more we did you were part of our breathwork event that we did and we got so deep and there was like 50 people dancing. And I just really got to see how big your heart is, you know, like how much you put your heart and your soul into everything that you do. And I was like, you got to come on Wellness Force, because if you're putting this much heart into just supporting other people's missions, like I can only imagine how much heart you're putting into your mission. And so I'd love for you to share, like, what is the mission of Revessel and what is Revessel? Well, I love that you're you're talking so much about me, but this mission came out of a recognition that I'm not here for me, that I'm here for something that's so much bigger than me. And it took me being broken down so much to recognize that I had to rebuild myself in a way that served others. And so that service-oriented mission, if you want to call it, or that that realization is now applied to everything that I do. And, you know, I'm serving my children every single day, but through my company and the expression of of my company is to serve others and, and specifically to serve others who are ready to be served. Yeah. Because I, I can't serve people if they're not willing to receive it. And so, you know, having been on a chronic health journey. And I'm sure we can get into that a little bit. We're going to get all into you. We're going <laughs> to revessel ourselves today. Okay. Wow. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Wow. Yeah. Have, having been there and recognizing that I needed help along my journey, I want to be there now. Having Being on the other side, I want to be there when somebody's ready for that assistance to, yeah. to be able to catch them and, and, and 
empower them. So this vessel, it's called Revessel. How did you come up with this name, Revessel? Well, I'd, I'd like to distinguish two things. So one is is we're developing a brand. We're really coming out with who we are in the world, what our company is all about, what our culture is about. And the DNA of our company is really expressed in our culture, how we show up in the world, what events we're at, um, and, and also through, you know, through the product that we're creating. Um, but the, you know, the flagship product that we created, the adventure kit is this, yes. you know, 13 piece system. I wish we and, had one right now. We could show everybody on Facebook live. Well, I brought it. It's did you? Yeah, I brought okay, it. Okay, We'll show you at the end. Okay. We'll get it at the end. Okay, yeah. great. So, you know, it was like taking every piece of what I needed and what I want in my future from a sustainability perspective. Because when I was on my health journey, yeah, I was thinking, how can I get more nutrient dense food in me? And of course, that's not where I started. Yeah. But that's what, you know, that that was the essence of what I look to do every day when I was looking for healing, true healing, you know, root healing. The food was the gateway for me. It wasn't the end all be all. It wasn't the only thing that I did. There were a lot of other modalities um, you know, just that came in, in waves or came, you know, came about, um, in time. I couldn't, I couldn't take it all Mm -hmm. at one time. It started, you know, it started primarily with food. And so this adventure kit is that idea that I needed functionality. I needed versatility. I needed to reduce the amount of toxins that I was exposed to so that my body could get back to, homeostasis so th- yeah. that my body could do what it's supposed to do so what was it you were you were heating up food in plastic you were feeling like maybe the containers you were using were taken away from your health like where actually were you at that time what were you dealing with that you felt this culmination of putting your food in safer containers well it, it, there, there's two things that happened there's the realization that I needed to make sure the food that I was choosing, that I was consuming was as nutrient dense as possible. So sourcing the food, it was, every source was clean, right? It's all organic, free of, you know, free of GMOs, of course. And, you know, it was that I'm, I've got this, you know, this, this problem that I've always got to do better. It's not a problem necessarily, but I have to keep it in check, right? It's how, you know, taking it to the next level. So I was using that food, but then I was taking it everywhere because my life wasn't just at home. I didn't want to be confined to a kitchen. I didn't want to be confined to just all I do is meal prep and cook. And, you know, then I don't get to experience tournaments for my children. And I don't get to experience trips with my girlfriends and, you know, events out in the world. It was all about, I wanted to extend those precious moments. And so I carried my food everywhere. I carried it. it I carried it in glass. Yeah. Because I knew that, you know, the exposure to to toxins. I've I've been studying, you know, environmental health and and um, you know, food profiling for for 5 years and that study of environmental toxicity once you start dealing and and looking, you find the information. You find it it's 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 no longer, you know, you know, surface level, you have to get under underneath, but it's, it's there and it's accessible. So it was like heating it up in the microwave in plastic. Was that a mistake that you made early on? Uh, My, my body had succumbed to the litany of environmental, you know, toxins. And and that's not just through food. We're exposed to over 80,000 chemicals every single day. And babies today are born with over 200 chemicals yeah. In their in their cord blood. I think you were mentioning to me before we recorded, like there's a credit card in our wallet and a study came out from a college recently. And this is how much plastic we eat every week. We're eating about five grams of plastic. So we're eating a credit card of plastic every week. Like, how is that even possible? What I've been looking at is, you know, how does plastic enter our food system? How does yeah. it enter the food chain? And most of us are, are mindlessly consuming. I was, I've, I've been there, you know, it's, mm. it's the easiest here and now, but if we look at, you know, what convenience really is in the short term, yes. Having, you know, having a disposable container or having a, a water bottle that I can just use and chuck right away. You're not thinking beyond the, the right here. You're not thinking about what that looks like for your children not thinking about what that looks like for their health or for their environment. You're not looking at what that looks like for the species that they get to experience. We lose about a species every 20 minutes wiped from the planet. Because of the plastic? 
because or just because be, of how we're treating the planet. Because of how we're treating the planet. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I do want to isolate, you know, plastic and our dependence on those fossil fuels and the dependence on those, you know, that that consumptive nature of take it, toss it. I don't have to worry about it anymore, but yeah. only 9% of plastics that have ever been produced have, a, have ever been recycled. This is so like where do such, they go? This is such a, I can feel your energy on this. It's a hot topic for you. It's a hot topic for a lot of people, but why is it so hot for you? Like, why did this calling come up where you wanted to revessel people's food, seeing how we're decimating the planet, seeing how much plastic is out there? Like, what? why does this mean so much to you? It means so much to me because I wanted so badly for this to be an easy process, for me to be able to just take my food wherever I wanted, for it to, you know, keeping the characteristics of the food the way that I wanted, to live a, a green, you know, and an eco-friendly lifestyle. But it was freaking hard. Yeah. It's not easy. The environment you, is not set up for easy food transport, especially no, healthy food transport. No, it's it's not. And, you know, as much as I tried, I, you know, it always took me a little bit longer. Yeah. So I wanted to prepare and create tools that made that switch, that made that shift, that made that awareness and the ability to change a little bit easier. Especially for parents, because I see my brother and his wife, and I even see the people around here where I live. The kids are consistently screaming. <laughs> they're like loud. They're having fun. They're being children. <laughs> and so I think when a parent, and I don't know this because I'm not a parent yet, but when most parents plan out the meals, I haven't seen them really focus on the containers. They're more focused on the food itself. But what I feel from you and even looking at Revessel is like the container is just as important for the health of the children as the food itself. Because if you have organic food and you're using it and heating it in plastic containers, it's really taking away from the power of the nutrients in the food. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a bit of, of a perfectionist too, is that I didn't want to, in, in that quest to, to have that healthier food, yeah, yeah, I didn't want to contaminate the food with toxins in, in the environment. So yeah. I didn't want to be leaching chemicals that were going to further disrupt and cause my body to have to work harder. So that endocrine disrupting chemical, you know, cocktail that I am exposed to every single day, that's just getting in the way of me becoming my best self. So in going through this, wow, you know, look at all this great food that I'm preparing, but wait a second, I'm so dependent on plastic. I'm so dependent on maybe going that extra step and taking glass, but I don't want to destroy the environment in the process. Yeah. So yes, I love this health movement. I love this, get all these healthy foods. And I even tried to free myself up from having to to cook. I look at cooking as a gift. It's an opportunity. It's something that I had to teach myself because I didn't grow. I grew up on that fast food. I grew up on that convenience food. And, and my mission is to make it more convenient yeah. to live a healthy and sustainable tell, life. Tell us about that because I grew up on welfare, right? So kick cereal, government cheese, no produce, no veggies. Like, And by the way, like government and my parents at that point did the best they could. It's just looking back, I can see where the gaps lived. And so it sounds to me like your food habits when you were younger, take us there because that was really, I feel a fire for why you've created Revessel was your childhood eating habits. What was that like for you? <laughs> well, it's every kid's dream to have McDonald's every Tuesday. Know, Are you right? kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> Although you ask my kids and like, I've, I think I've had McDonald's once and I've got a nine and a seven year old. Good. And Good for them. <laughs> yeah. So they, you know, they're, they're not, the truth is not hidden from them. We bring them in and want them to be, you know, aware of of their surroundings. And and there are times when I get angry. There are times that I get angry about how we got this far in our food system to allow that proliferation of poison to show up on every corner and not have some sort of balance. And I think that that balance is is perhaps rising up. You know, I, I feel like there's this, there's momentum and this movement toward, but wait, okay. So the food comes this way, but where did that food come from? Mm -hmm. And how was, you know, how, how was the soil taken care of when that plant was growing in there? So there's this, this, uh, longing for more information about, you know, it's, it's a burger, but tell me the story about that burger. But and you, I think, when you were young, you didn't know the story. 
like take us there. Like, you, you just ate whatever was in front of you. Can you tell I don't want to talk about McDonald's? Yeah, that's why I keep bringing it back to you. I keep bringing it back. Like, tell so, us about your childhood so, because this is where all of our beliefs are formed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and I was a high-level gymnast. And yeah. I saw my gymnastics career at the age of 16 kind of come to an end because I just had this random, you know, bone that died in my elbow. A random bone that died in your elbow? Just a bone that, you know, that that no longer received blood. It no longer received nutrients. And so I went through a series of surgeries and bone grafts to to heal that bone. But if I knew what, what I know now, I would know that the problem didn't exist here. The problem existed here. I was asking so much of my body. And this is kind of the, the overarching message is I was asking so much of my body, training 40 hours a week in gymnastics as a girl who was trying to develop into a woman, but I was suppressing you know, that just by way of training. Mm. And so the amount that I was giving back was not equal. It was not yeah. sufficient. Your to... parents had no idea, right? Like they didn't know that the food had the correlation to the bone death. No one did at that time. No, 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 no. It was, you know, it was very much conventional, you know, medicine that was that was treating the the symptom, but definitely not treating the where your your cells and your bone health comes from. With all your knowledge now, what do you think was going on from a scientific perspective? Like, what do you see was going on there? that actually pushed you out of gymnastics? The, the amount of, of high fructose corn syrup and, you know, <laughs> nutrient deficient food that I was consuming. And I just want to be clear that my parents left me with so many gifts. Sure. And never would I change any of it. Ever, ever. Um, you know, it, it just, it, it was... This was back when, you know, hey, if you want to have a smaller baby, smoke cigarettes while you're pregnant. You know, like wow. this is this is yeah. the kind of stuff that- We've come that such a long we've way. We've come so far. We've come such a long way. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, that type of thinking that, oh my gosh, this will make your life so much easier, but those long-term consequences. So when I look at, again, convenience, I look at convenience in the long term. How is this convenient for 40 years from now? What does this look like 40 years from now? Yeah. So now when I look at what I'm demanding from my body, my brain, any, any part of, of my being, am I putting back in? Yeah. So that comes in the way of, am I doing the practices? Am I doing the work, the inner work, the outer work? Am I doing all of it to balance out? the amount that I'm putting out. Well, I want to go back and I know it might be uncomfortable, but I think we all can feel our story is like a representation of how we live our adult lives, you know, mm -hmm. our childhood presence. And so I'm thinking about you, you're 16, 17 when this happened? Correct. 16, 17. What did that look like for you to change from 17? You obviously weren't relying on conventional wisdom to heal or, or did you use conventional wisdom to heal? Because this, this put you out for quite a while. It it was the end to to gymnastics for me at the yeah. time, or the the level of gymnastics that I was doing. I mean, you know that I still do gymnastics whenever, <laughs> whenever. We just jumped I can. on a trampoline. <laughs> we jumped on a trampoline. You were like, "Can I do a flip? <laughs> <laughs> Would it be weird? <laughs> Can I do a flip right now?" On your I porch? know it's only a small trampoline, yeah, but yeah. The, the healing was really, you know, it was acute. It was the healing happened there. It didn't resolve the 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 you know the underlying issues. But I continued to demand from my body through college. You know, gymnastics career ends. I just went and I just wanted to have fun. I wanted to go and discover what it meant to have friends like on a Friday night and a Thursday night. And so I went and had friends like every night of college. I think, <laughs> I think people forget how incredibly structured and just like vigilant gymnastics training is. Yeah. I mean, it's every day, dust till dawn, like everything's planned. Yes. Is that what it felt like? Totally. Totally. Yeah. And I, I, I went off the rails a little bit. I tried to kind of push things and push the boundaries and again, see how far I could take it. Graduate college, get into my first job. Again, social life was really important to me. So, you know, pulling all nighters, then go and meet, meet my husband up in San Francisco. We get married, end up, you know, working a 80 hour, you know, a week career. What was that career at that time? Um, I was selling real estate actually up in the Bay wow. Area. Wow. I yeah. bet you killed it. I bet you killed it at real estate. I killed it in developing a business that was built for the long term, yeah. but as soon as the baby came. So when I was a little girl, I wrote on a card that I will be a mom. 
And that was the only thing that I cared about being was being a mom. Mm. And that came true. I wrote at 25, I'll be married at 28. I'll have my first baby. And when I reflected on that, that's exactly what happened. I had my first son at 28, but what I didn't include on that card was that I'm going to be healthy. Obviously, as a young girl, you're not thinking like about all those details at the Cause time. Because you're already healthy. I'm, yeah. Right, exactly. Sure. So yeah, so my husband and I, we had our first child and it was like shift away from that career mode that, that you know, it, it was pretty much done. So I wrapped up, sent a lot of business to somebody that I worked with and it w- never really turned back. And that that's kind of the way my mind works is like, not like, one and done, not like did it, I accomplished that, I conquered and move on. But what did I learn from that? What can I take? And I wouldn't be where I'm at today if it weren't for being a mother, if it weren't for having, you know, jobs in product development and project management and being able to, you know, really look at big picture stuff, yeah. but also the minutia and the, and the fine details. What do you think is the biggest challenge for moms when it comes to food and health? Like what's the number one? The resistance when you go outside your home. A, if you don't protect your home with what truly matters. So if you're struggling because your child is constantly craving sugar and your house is littered with sugar, when you're not looking, your child will be cracking open a a bag of gummies or, you know, whatever exists because it's fast. But I think that as a mom, you go outside your home and what do you the proliferation of convenience food. If you're not in your home and you're out for a tournament or a play date, what's right next to you when your child says they're hungry is that fast packaged processed, I call it pharma, yeah. pharma food, but it is pharma food. <laughs> no, I mean, cause it, cause and, really the food, the food that most people are eating, it makes them sick over the long haul, which then contributes to them being on medications from the pharmaceutical industry, which then also benefits the medical industry. And like, you know, you don't have to be even that intelligent to see the dots connected all over the place. And that's why I asked you, you know, what, what is the most largest struggle for a parent, for a mom or a dad? I feel like it's their own health behaviors first uh, because if okay. I'm curious what you feel about this. If, if a mother or father is not leading by example, Absolutely. then those actions speak so much louder than words. You know, you could have a house with 10 re vessels in it, but if you're eating foods that aren't really contributing to your health bottom line, it doesn't really matter what container your food is in. Well, when I talk to people about those struggles, this is the way that it comes across. Don't expect your child to do anything that you're not willing to do. Don't impose your own opinions and your own bias on your child. If you don't like mushrooms, there's a lot contained in mushrooms that your child may be missing out on if you tell them, gross. That that plants a seed for them that these are gross. And my dad thinks they're gross. I love my dad. So why would I want to do a gross thing? Yes. So step back and allow them to form their own opinions. Seriously, we could do 70 podcasts on food Uh and talking about, you know, how to take that deep dive. And, you know, I think that, that the outside world, there's so much resistance. And I kind of broke it down to, I think my theory is that parents think that you can either have a good relationship with your child or you can take them down this journey of health in today's world. And, and I, you know, I, I, I want to debunk that. And can I, we do both? I, I, I absolutely think that you can have both. You yeah. can have that loving relationship with your child. You can, in parallel, go down that journey and do it with love and do it with acknowledgement that everybody's different. Everybody's going to receive it differently. But when we know better, we do better. And as your child grows, you're going to set them up for success and for knowing how to navigate the traps in the minefield. And I, I don't want to paint it out that there's no good food out there because, oh man, I love discovering new restaurants. You're such are- a foodie. I look at your Instagrams and just your life and I'm like, she's eating literally the best food I've ever seen. It's almost like all your meals are like little artworks. Yeah. Do you feel that way about your food? Like it's oh. like your plate is like a canvas? Oh, totally. And I never, you know, first of all, like I said, I wrote on a card that I was going to grow up and be a mom. And I, I'm, that is the first thing that I am in every day. Everything that I do is for my kids. 
But I never wrote on there, I'm going to, you know, design food storage and, you know, <laughs> that that was not on the list. This, yeah. was, this was absolutely a calling. And stepping into this journey was stepping into the unknown. It was stepping into the uncomfortable. It was, you know, getting comfortable with something new every single day. I want to challenge you because you said something that really stuck to me. You said, if we know better, then we do better. Right. And I agree with that. Mm-hmm. But there's also a middle piece. Sure. Like knowing and doing can be totally separate. Sure. So what's the recipe in the middle? Like, how do you see that in the middle of knowing and doing? How do we connect the knowing and the doing? You know, the embodiment process sure. versus just gathering all the time. I think it's tools and inspiration and accountability and continually focusing on that long game, you know, being reminded that when you're in that state of being challenged and kind of in that tension of being pulled in in different directions, that you return to, what is this all about? And who's there to guide me? And who's there? Because we don't go through this alone, right? Yeah. We're, we're yeah, all- we're never alone. No. And, mm-hmm. and- It may feel like it sometimes. Absolutely. But it's not the truth. It's not the truth at all. Yeah. So for me, hearing powerful stories of change and transformation and stepping into this fun challenge. So talk about challenges, you know, a couple years ago, um, I want to say this might have been a Sean Stevenson thing that it was like, what, you know, what did you do for the first time today? And I was like, huh? Huh? I don't know. So that day, years ago, I started doing something brand new every single day. I love this. And, oh, I had no idea how that was going to literally change me. So when I look in the mirror today, I'm like, how did you, how did you get here? Like, how did this happen? How are you, you know, how are you going and, and, and making change in the world? How did that happen? And it was literally the confidence that I gained from doing something new every single day that wasn't attached to the outcome. It wasn't attached to you must succeed. It was, you've never done that before. So yeah. here's your challenges. Go, go try. Was it just like, oh, I, I'm curious about what will happen. I'm curious about what's possible. Is that the fire that you stoked? Total cure. Well, how many of us go about our every single day going, I've never done that. It's too hard. The The first like 10 times that I tried something new, it was like, I think the common theme was that wasn't as hard as I thought it was. Yeah. Oh, I actually kind of like that. Oh, if I didn't like it, I didn't have to do it again. You know, I was putting myself out there a little bit. Sometimes it would be in a public place. It's like, oh my gosh, I have to do this new thing today. It was juggling in Bryant Park in New York. And I'm like, I've never juggled. I don't even know how to juggle. I could have walked on and kept going and rounded the next corner and gone back to finish my you know, lunch from Whole Foods or I stopped and I was like, oh, remember that? All right, here we go. And within six minutes, I had, you know, juggled. And then you look at the benefits of juggling, right? All the brain development and coordination. All the brain development and coordination. You know, it's it's a challenging thing, especially if, if maybe that's not my thing. So being able to juggle. So I actually take that when I go into classrooms and and give workshops, this is kind of a, 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 you know, a, a more of a, a deeper love or longer game for me, but going into classrooms and teaching kids about trying a new food, I compare it to my first time juggling or my first time baking something or my yeah. first time trying this food and how oh. I wasn't super sure about oh it. But these kids are like, Trent, your mom's cool. <laughs> like your <laughs> I, mom's a circus wait, act. Wait, in a... Your boy's name is Trent? Yeah. My last name's Trent. This is beautiful. I, Have you re- told me this before? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty I love sure this. it was early on. We've we, our paths have crossed many, many times, many times. But I was thinking about Thailand. Like you made me remember Thailand. I had dragon fruit for the first time in Thailand, and mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, this is such an amazing food. Mm-hmm. It tastes so good." Mm-hmm. And I think I got turned off to it because it had like these little spikes on the outside of it. You know, <laughs> like it looked all weird. Yeah. And I you think, wow, it. this is such a met. I, I food judged. <laughs> this is such a metaphor for life. The lens of. Shout out to Sean Stevenson, you know, doing something for the first time, Mm -hmm. trying a new food is just like juggling in the park. We talk about conditioning and, you know, if you think about your life today, if, if you were to reflect on like tomorrow, I'm like, I cannot wait for tomorrow to think the exact same thoughts to, and and think about the thoughts that you say to, you know, the conversation that I have with myself is often 
like 0.05% comes out to other people. I share maybe just a little bit of the crazy thoughts that are going through my head on like what I, what I can be or how I can change the world and all this stuff. But that's the new me. That's the rewired me. The old me, it's like, you're not good enough. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say. You're, you know, you, you don't know enough to go talk to that doctor about, you know, about nutrition and about nutrient dense food and about soil fertility. You don't, who are you to go talk to that doctor and tell him and not tell him I'm not, you know, I'm not out to, to go, you know, accuse somebody of not having the toolkit, but it's, looking at the conversation that you're having and do you want that conversation that those, those thoughts to be the same we think literally 95% of the the thoughts that you think today you're going to think tomorrow yeah and i love that unless you said unless you intervene there was that part of you that's like who am i to go have this conversation right. who are you to launch revessel right who are you to come on a podcast who are you not to exactly i mean that's that's the real truth well here's a question you know maybe maybe 5 years ago i would have asked this question what if i fail and going through that process of doing something new every single day Failure's part of it. That's the culture we're breeding is that when you fall, we're like, yay. Yeah. You've actually taken that next step because you need nine more of those to get to that success. And so we're breeding that culture. And had I not built up that confidence around, oh my gosh, it's so easy to make granola. Who knew? Or juggling is hard. And if I commit five minutes a day to it or playing piano, my boys went through, you know, three years of music theory class and I kind of got a two for one because I had to go to some of the classes with them. But here I am playing like Ode to Joy or something. And I'm, I, I didn't know I could do that. Yes. And so there's so much that changes. Um, so that intervention part of it is the key, Right. What do you change your thoughts? So where I, five years ago, I would have thought, what happens if I fail? My question today is, what if I succeed? Mm-hmm. What does that look like? Who do I want with me? Who do I want around me? That intentional, I don't want to say curation because I, I really, I, I get a little bit uncomfortable when I hear about calculated and, you know, curation is okay, but the intentional, the curiosity that, you know, that envisioning, what does that look like? What does it look like five years from now when people have actually been able to experience the empowering tools that we're creating right now? There's curiosity big time around yeah. that. So the, curi- the curiosity is pretty big for you. It seems like Absolutely. the new things, the juggling. And, and then going back to what does this mean to the world? I just feel like if we have curiosity and we're trying new things and we're working on our inner game, you know, you have a journal you brought in and there's all these notes that you share with me. And I think doing the work is one component, but what happens when we do the work and then the world is still suffering? Because we could do all the inner work we want to if we don't have some kind of barometer, some kind of inner alarm that almost goes off as a collective, then nothing's going to change as far as how we treat the planet. So I'd love to go back to this question here, like how we treat ourselves, what kind of containers we use, the foods that we eat. It's a mirror. It's a corollary to how we treat the planet. Oh, we we are mirrors of what's happening in nature. Absolutely. And and that was a huge part for me is there was there was a moment when I was being treated by a naturopathic doctor and I went in, you know, I had had two babies, but I, I didn't think I was done yet. And so I, I I blatantly asked the question like what would happen if I got pregnant? And he's like I don't think you could get pregnant. And if you could, Th- there's a good chance that you would not be able to 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 carry that pregnancy to full term. And that, why did he say that? Because of my blood, you know, because of of my my hormone levels, and okay. because of the 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 ca- the internal chaos that was going on at the time. Yeah, I, I I was experiencing not from you couldn't tell from the outside that there was chaos going on, but there was metabolic chaos going on, and it was you know, it was systemic. It was chronic inflammation. You know, the, the, the the panic attacks that I mentioned earlier before we started recording was that that was like the early alarm. But if I look back there, there were other, you know, kind of silent alarms, but it was really a, a, you know, a trigger from, uh, you know, from, from losing somebody close to me or, or or realizing that I was about to witness the loss of somebody close to me. So, you know, when, when I was told that by the, the doctor that I was seeing at the time, that I wouldn't be able to get pregnant. I started seeing that in the world around me. The fact that these trees that I had had for four years and they weren't bearing fruit yet. And why weren't they bearing fruit? And 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 part of my healing journey was this 
why? Why? This, this inquis- inquisition and starting to get this curiosity of like, why is it that way? And mm-hmm. then keep going. Like I'm a three-year-old again going, but why, mommy? But why? I but feel like that all why? the time. That means you're on the right track when you start to feel young. It's like, I'm curious about that because I have a child's heart and mind that I'm approaching it from. Yeah, absolutely. So that's where my love and passion and curiosity started to really develop around that mirroring of what happens in nature happens here. And I'm, you know, seeing that when you return nutrients to the soil and when you bring, you know, what has is, is considered waste and you turn that into something that can regenerate, your trees regenerate. Yeah. They become fertile again. They so start did your to trees, bear fruit. Did your trees start to bear fruit? Oh, uh, you, I mean, uh, in my little space, I've got a little, you know, orchard. In my I got to come check out <laughs> suburban, this garden. Yeah. Suburban, yeah. So I'm kind of counterculture in suburbia where I have got my raised beds and I've got, you know, probably 15 different trees. You're the foodie and, on the block. I'm, I'm, I'm Jesse, the foodie from the block. Jesse, yeah. the foodie from the block. <laughs> So mirroring that, I I think that that's a natural evolution. And I think that everybody's journey happens differently. But as I saw the, the, the ability, the resilience come back and that grace come back after returning nutrients to the soil, I saw that same thing in me. I saw that I now had literally in my, in my blood chemistry was able to now look at the idea of, of having another baby if I wanted to. It, it, before it wasn't a choice. So there was a direct connection between how you were taking care of your produce, the foods that were you, you were eating, and then how you were able to then get pregnant if you wanted to. Well, how I was looking at at nature, you know, how I was seeing what was happening. How you were in perceiving nature, it. How I was perceiving it, but then you know, kind of my story as kind of a testament to when you can reduce the the insults that are happening, when you can bring back the nutrients and create the conditions, the, the things will happen. It You know, we are designed to heal. The soil is healing. The tree is healing. The fertility is coming back. It's returning because the conditions that were created. And for me, that's what happened is, you know, I look at where I am now versus where I was. I mean, there were 30 years of my life that I took, I extracted resources and didn't really put back in. And in three or four years of consistent dedication and creating boundaries so that I could, you know, make sure that if I'm going to pursue this path, I'm going to, I'm going to do it as best I can. I'm going to give it my all. And I think that that journey to health was far more, far, far easier than staying sick and staying in that state of being less than I was designed to be and accepting that this is just the way it is. This is just, you know, getting older, you know, foggy brain, periodic panic attacks, numbness and constant pain in my joints and gut distress. And I mean, the, the, the list in the early first 18 months Grew every day. What were some of the foods you were consuming that gave you that new perspective, that gave you that new feeling mm. in your body? Yeah. Right? Like, were there like a 10 or like handfuls of foods that you would go to yeah. that every time you'd eat them, you'd know, oh, that my body likes this. I'm healing. And when I heal, the world heals. Yeah. And, and I kind of jumped on a lot of different, I wouldn't say I like jumped on the bandwagon just to jump on it, but it was, I can, you know, I was certain, certainly and, and still am. If that's possible, what else is possible? So, shout out to Leafy Greens. Looking at what can I replace? And this I've is, never had somebody say shout out to Leafy Greens. Oh my on gosh! The if anybody's gonna say it, it's gonna be me. <laughs> that's awesome. If anybody's gonna say it, and ask any one of my Greens. friends, I mean, I am on a on a hunt. Yeah. And and on a hunt to get the most nutrient dense. So, what, what types of leafy greens specifically? Oh, you know, the, the, the health of your gut is directly correlated to the diversity of plants that you eat. So the, your microbiome is looking for that diversity. It's looking for, yeah, you're going to get romaine today, but you're going to also get spinach and kale and you're going to get Swiss chard and you're going to get mustard greens and any kind of green. So we're talking like broccoli sprouts and we're talking about things that, that I was, I was, I think I had iceberg lettuce. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't a, where can I get 
something else that this plant won't provide, but this one will. Most, so, most people, they get a salad and it's like iceberg lettuce and croutons. Croutons and some tomatoes <laughs> and, and like, ranch. And like ranch. And it's yeah. not really a salad because we can make these foods taste so good. Yeah. And they're all out there. Yeah. And one thing you mentioned to me too, and how this relates to us healing the world as well, is going to a farmer's market for, for most people is like a luxury. It's considered a luxury. Mm. Now, I don't think it has to be that way. I think right. we can flip the script like we've been talking about. But how do we actually do this? I mean, this is a big question. And I like putting you on the spot because you seem like this is a big piece of your life is to actually heal the world and heal the way we, we feed ourselves. So how do we make going to the farmer's market, not a luxury. How do we make eating this barrage of leafy greens not a luxury and tasty? What does that look like? I absolutely think it it comes down to what's your vision? Does your 80-year-old self want to be up running around with your grandchildren? This this is I'm I'm sharing, you know, kind of exposing what what it came down for me. Yeah. And when my children looked at me and I didn't know if I was waking up tomorrow or not, if that panic attack was really just a symptom of, you know, something else going on or if what was happening in my body was so close to to something else greater happening. And I looked at them and first of all, saw that happening in their life based on what they were being exposed to. That was a game changing day for me. So it can you you know thirty one years and like one day is all it took. It was that one day, but you know going for thirty years. So you know uh, this is this is maybe to your audience of if you've been going through something for thirty years, it takes one day, it takes thirty seconds of something that you hear, something monumental, something so much bigger than you. So for me, looking at my children and having them look at me when I was in a state of despair and uncertainty about what tomorrow would bring, that's when I said, I want to be playing with these guys and their kids when I'm 80. You know, I want to be doing handstands when I'm 80. Yeah. And so, you know, for and there, there were cartwheels and splits in there too. And, you know, <laughs> all, all the things that most people are thinking about doing. But it was, then what's the path there? And what does that look like? How do I, how do I regain and restore what I lost and what really what I relinquished, what I gave up, what I didn't know I was giving up and how do I reclaim that? Were you laying in bed and you felt like almost like a like a stab of emotion and, and that was what made you ask the question, it was how a, do I get there? Yeah, it was a declaration of no more, no more, no more, no more outside forces, you know, influencing me. It's going to come from me. It's going to come through setting boundaries and creating that structure, which ultimately created so much freedom for me. And that's what our, the, the message that we're, we're offering with, with our company is that this structure frees you up to go explore all day. No more dependence on somebody else for your nutrients. No more dependence on somebody else for your health to tell you what's healthy. You determine what's healthy for you. and yeah, there was this moment of just my my life flashing before my eyes and deciding that that this wasn't it for me. You know, this wasn't the life that that God put me on this planet to live. Questioning and underperforming and not being the wife and not being the the partner that I was meant to be. I couldn't be present for my children because I was waking up in the morning having to go through two hours of healing every morning, which that the shout out to all you healers from from chronic disease and living in that state it's 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 a tough place to be it's it's not a forever place to be though mm. and it's there's 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 something on the other side and every time i would climb and i would pause for a minute to kind of reflect on where i came from that journal will be you know kind of be my reminder of it, it wasn't always that way, but it didn't always have. It didn't have to stay that way. I think about your story and the metaphor that it really resembles for where we're at as a collective in the planet. Because it's interesting your your story of like waking up one day and saying, "Wow, this hurts so bad that I can't be here for my children the way that I want to." Mm -hmm. That's what's going on with we as human beings, the children of Mother Earth, right now. Yeah. it's the exact same thing. Yeah, and so. Yes, it does make a big difference what food we eat. And yes, it does make a big difference what we do as far as how we treat the planet. And I'd love to go tactical with you because I know people are feeling you right now and I know they're feeling your story. Can I say something real quick about, about the level of stress that I was allowing in my life and the things that I kept saying, 
yes to that kept me there, that kept me taxing my body. And and from a planetary perspective, and that's where you wanted you wanted to go there is how is that a symbol of how we take care of ourselves? I was taxing myself. I was pushing myself to the limit. Mm. I was allowing, you know, unknowingly and knowingly an amount of toxins in my body from my environment, from my choices that was destroying me, that was causing stress to my body. And if I translate that to what's happening in our planet right now, you look at, you know, the Gulf of Mexico and you look at the dead zones, you look at the amount of life that's being destroyed. What is a dead zone? A dead zone is we have, you know, we have all of these rivers that kind of lead to the Mississippi, right? So you have all this farmland throughout the United States and from this farmland washes out all these synthetic fertilizers and they all come together and converge in the Mississippi River and the Mississippi River flows out into the ocean. And when you have these synthetic chemicals that are now being washed out, they're killing life in, in the ocean. And it's starting to spread. We've got, you know, dead zones where life cannot survive, where the only thing that can survive is algae. So you've got these huge algae blooms that life cannot exist there. Mm. And that is a symbol and that's a symptom. So if you look at a human body versus the planetary body, you have a symptom of extreme stress happening when you have these algae blooms and this, this, this stress taking place in our oceans. And you know, these, these are the alarms that I, I, I'm, I'm ready to listen to and I'm ready to do something about. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big alarm. And, and I think people can see stuff on the media and be like, oh, there's no global warming. And we're in such a insidious back and forth with like, what's the truth about science? What's really going on? I urge everyone to go to your colleague, Dr. Zach Bush's website. And can you share with us actually, like, what's this connection with you and, and Dr. <laughs> Bush? And what does this mean to you and Revessel? Mm. This this medical connection sure. with your sustainable agriculture connection. Sure. So I guess early on, when I when I when I was really digging up information, when I was kind of doing that why thing, that you know three year old why 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 why. That's my favorite. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> three year olds are awesome, by the way. <laughs> our paths had crossed because. I was so devoted to understanding what was going on in our food system. Mm. You know, is that okay? So here's how I source food, but where's that for food coming from? So it got back to like the seed and then it went further to the soil. And so understanding what was happening in our food system with this, this you know, 250 million pounds of, of glyphosate being sprayed in the U.S. and what that does to our to our food. And, and I say pharma food and, and I also mean that it's literally an antibiotic that our our plants are being sprayed with. So we're taught that, you know, even on TV, we're taught that in order to live a happy, joyful life, it's totally normal for you to be on a on a prescription medication. Yeah. And that's normalized. And it's like, if you want to live healthy, it's not almost for, not like- Not for the people that are here with us. We know that's not true. Uh, of course, of course. But, but definitely it's the mainstream narrative. It's the mainstream, but that's the same thing in our food system, that in order to- to achieve these yields in order to to grow these beautiful glossy plants you need to have this life support and if you don't then you you literally don't get the funding from banks you don't have your community yeah. to keep you alive and so we lost we were constantly losing so many family farms that are producing diverse food so so anyways back back to Dr. Bush it, it was really actually quite interesting so watched many documentaries, kind of listened to here and there, uh, was fascinated with Ben Greenfield and, and that biohacking side and really looking at how I can kind of go down multiple paths at the same time. Let's, mm -hmm. let's try some new and interesting stuff. And so there were a lot of interesting things that actually revealed some really great healing opportunities for me. So having known about Dr. Bush, I, you know, through, through conscious capitalism, which is how we've established our company, which is so exciting. It's so exciting to have something brand new and go, we're a new generation of brands coming into the world saying, we have new responsibilities as a business to do good in this world, to do more, to bring in our stakeholders and give back, to yeah. heal using, use, use business for, for healing. So we ended up running into each other and he flipped around and he's like, I'm Zach. And I was kind of like, I know, Did you, you know, the fangirl moment for sure. Yeah. For sure. I was like, first of all, <laughs> okay, 
where did so you know this was when Restore was just just kind of coming out yeah. and he had just moved here so through this organization I got to to know him and we we've shared a, a quite a bit so when when he set out to create a, a path to food independence that was an opportunity for us to support that nonprofit organization so when you purchase an adventure kit or you purchase any of our products from Revessel, then you know that you're giving back to regenerative organic agriculture. So that, you know, is another way that we look at how our business can cross sectors into the nonprofit world to support organizations that are doing work that's going to do more than we can. I can't do it all. You know, I can't go sure. out and have these relationships with, I mean, granted, I love farmers and that's what brings me to the farmer's market is because I know where my food is coming from. I talk to them and, you know, get to have an intimate relationship with the food that becomes an intimate part of me. Yeah. So we have this exciting opportunity now to use our food system, use our company and use food as a medium for climate change, for human health and that to me is so stinking exciting that I, it's, it's, it, you know, I just, I just look at all these events that had to take place for that to come to fruition. What is this connection with Zach going to produce in the future? You know, the, the mission to regenerate 5 million acres of farmland by 2025, taking, yeah. taking this dependency of, from, from chemicals. And it's, it's a, you know, it's an addiction, it's an addiction that these farmers have that they can't break on their own because if they break it, then they can't get loans from the bank. They can't, you know, they, they need support to go back to traditions and the way their grandfathers so that they don't lose their farm. Mm, I just got a huge download. I'm thinking about putting my food in a container, having it be safe. I'm putting more attention and energy into the food that I'm eating and I'm just caring about what that means to the people that are in my family and my friends. Like this is actually the biggest honoring we can have to our ancestors and to the planet. Oh yeah. Is how we eat together. Yeah. This dying art form. It's a dying art form mm -hmm. of like eating food with people that we care about. Yeah. Recently I had a guest. It's the new relationship in my life. And she came over and I was like making her breakfast and lunch. And she was like, this is so beautiful. I, I never really cook for myself that often. And I thought, yeah, isn't it funny that food is a catalyst and a magnet to bring us together? Mm -hmm. Because we all have to eat anyways. If we don't eat, we die. So food becomes this beautiful conduit for human connection. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if anything people get from this conversation is if you just care 1% more, literally, it doesn't have to be like this massive change in your life. Go purchase a food piece, this revessel that is designed to bring people together. You're revesseling yourself. <laughs> this is the title of this show. Like we're revesseling what it means to go out into public and eat foods. We're revesseling what it means to have dinner with our families, you know, on a vacation or yeah. just, just to be with one another. Yep. And this is what I've always felt from you. This is way deeper than just food storage, food safety. I, I'd love for you to share, like, what are you most excited about for the future? So there's all these different things. I know you like to do a lot. What's coming in the future that you're most excited about for Revessel? I think this goes back to curiosity. I've met so many of the, the people who have inspired me and allowed that to take me to new places and see new things. And again, invite that in, the newness of what, what happens if we do succeed. Yeah. And, and where, where do we go? What I does success look like? I don't know where we well, go. What if you could wave a magic wand? What oh, no, no. I, I know what success looks uh -huh. like. Success fr from, you know, kind of from a really low level, being successful would mean that anyone from, say, Imagine Dragons, would be using our product. They love healthy food. They, you know, they're on the road all the time. That'd they're, be so cool. They're at their concert. Everyone buy a revessel. <laughs> buy an adventure kit. <laughs> Go get stage. some foods. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But also in developing worlds where they don't have access to safe ways of carrying their food, where, you know, people who are underserved, they have access to high quality nutrient dense food. Big picture, that food is a healing mechanism, both for our planet and for humans. And we look at the statistics for, for children in disease today, and who cares about adults right now? Because I ended up being a statistic, but look at how quickly our children are succumbing to disease. And we have 46% of one in one, almost one in two of our children 
are living with a chronic disease, a chronic illness. And I don't, again, going back to my own story, I don't think that's how I was supposed to live my life. Maybe that adversity, which we all face adversity. And I think children need to face adversity to really, you know, you you can't see the light if you have never seen the dark. You can't, yeah. you know, appreciate heat if you've never felt cold. So having some adversity, but not making a chronic condition out of it. And that's where if we were to move the needle and we were to change that t- statistic around chronic disease in children, that would be success for us. Mm, I felt the gravity of that because it seems like I think people can feel they don't have any power sometimes. What difference is it going to make if I take better care of my food or if I do my thing? I mean, literally Gandhi was correct. Like be the change you wish to see in the world. And we do have the power. I think it's so easy for people to forget like how much power we have every single meal. It's not just some kind of thing that lives in the background where it's a meme on social media where it's like, eat healthy and you'll be healthy. Mm -hmm. It truly is a powerful conduit to human health every single time we eat. We're going to be giving away one of these, which is really exciting. I'm going to be purchasing one. I'm going to give it to the audience. I think it's an amazing container. It's got a cutting board on top. It's got all these different pieces inside of it. I would actually love for you to grab it right now and then we could like show the people watching on (laughs) Facebook because- we all buy like glass Tupperware. We buy these different things. And in my, even in my uh, cupboard in the kitchen, there's like the ones with the plastic lids. So I thought about this this morning before Jessica came over and I was like, oh, I, I heat up the food and then I put the hot food in the glass and then there's like a plastic lid on top. So this is like a big point of contention for me where, oh, if, if, my, if my glass lid is not pushing phytochemicals into the system, but then I have a plastic lid on top of it. Like I get to get new cookware. I get to get new storage where I just, I thought of it this morning. I was like, Oh, it's in glass. It's fine. But there's a plastic lid on top. Mm. So when I put the warm food inside of it, that goes up to the plastic and heats up the plastic. Yeah. And so, then it, it, all the condensation drips exactly. right back down. And then I'm getting all these plastic chemicals. Think right? about, so, think about your coffee cup. I, I only drink out of plastic, ceramic. Um, think about your as in yes, beyond. people's. Right. Um, okay, so this is but one of the But how easy is it to take your own cup? I mean, so, oh, well, so I our do that big now. campaign this month is yes. that this is the next evolution to bring your own, right? So bring your own straw, bring your own cup, yeah. bring your own flatware, bring your bring your own bag. Coast, you know, coast to coast. I think we've we've definitely seen some changes. Yeah, we've seen a ban up in Berkeley. We've 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 seen Canada say, you know, we're done with single use plastics. We've seen things happen in New York, and it's all really amazing stuff. But the next evolution of that is the three point two million tons or pounds or lots three lots <laughs> annually that, that we're generating in in food packaging. Yeah. So that single use consumption. I saw this about Trader Joe's. Mm. Um, there was yeah. a petition yep. for Trader Joe's to like shrink their packaging. And I think the number one is Amazon. I mean, Amazon, you get a box within a box within a box. Well, you know what <laughs> we like do with that? We, com- we compost all that Beautiful. stuff. Yes. So that goes in and helps the fertility in our soil, I right? I love this. So, well, let's look at this thing. Okay. okay, okay. So tell people so, what this is. So I brought this, Not n- I, I wasn't expecting to show it, but this is awesome. So We're going to give one are- away. If, if you're watching this right now, just actually go to wellnessforce.com and on the podcast, you can actually just type in revessel and then we'll pick somebody um, one week after this comes out and we'll okay. give it to them. And then we've got a, a code to give out to your audience Ooh, too. You, are you going to give us a discount? For an additional. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So right now we're, yeah. we're pre-ordering the products that are going to be fulfilled. So anybody that's ordered after July will receive their products within 90 days. So anybody that ordered pre-July will be seeing the product. So the first folks to actually have and use these products will be receiving them in August. Excellent. Okay, so, so sign up to win one of these. Just type Revessel in the comments or type Revessel yeah. on the podcast itself. And we've got some awesome giveaways with some really cool brands cool. Um, coming up. Let's so, dig into this. Like, okay. I want to know how this is so, made. So, well, this is kind of a, a, a behind the scenes in, in, in manufacturing. So we're just getting some parts that literally the, I saw these for the first time on Monday. Cool. And these are actual production parts, but we still, you know, we still have some tweaks to make. So these are the um, the silicone lids. Yes, they are compression molded. <laughs> this is all silicone. So this is all food grade silicone. Yeah. Super. Here, I'll, I'll, you have to be my Vanna. Oh, yeah. Be Vanna. Can I be Ken? You this, can... <laughs> here, it is. here it is. Is this it's, bar- I... is this Barbie and Ken or yes. is this Vanna I, White? Well, I just I just bought my niece a Barbie, so Aww, it's on my mind. Sweet. So yeah. I'll do a little. This is really thick. It is. It is. Is this to hold in the heat? No, or, it's or the cold or 
well, if you think if if you, if you think of when you're stacking food, yeah, we didn't want this to be something that's stacking it up and it's sagging down. So this is the adventure kit. So this is kind of the flagship. What 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 is the, you know, what is the expression that we wanted to to share and put out in the world? So this is your travel ready food storage system. It's got like really big locking mechanisms on the outside. Yeah. So this is the conversion kit. So that is needed when when you take your food on the go and you're packing up your lunch for the office, you're going on a hike or something. So it's 13 pieces. Everything that you're seeing right here really comes down to 13 pieces that can do so much more. So yeah. each of these is portioned for about a cup. So you have your measuring cup, you've got stainless steel, and then they can all be used in the oven. So you can reheat them. If you have a toaster oven at work, you can reheat your quiche. You from, can bake with these too? You can bake in them. Yeah. So they're mm. oven safe. We've done some te- you know, we've done some testing and we're constantly updating our FAQ page on what works and, and what we're confident with. And there's still some gray areas just as we test the products, but we're having great success going from freezer. So if you've, you know, baked some baked a quiche or a casserole and then you go throw it right back in the oven it's going from freezer to oven without having to, you know, to change it up. So my laundry list of, of functionality was, it was, it was crazy. We, Mm -hmm. our engineers literally thought it was crazy. (laughs) They're like, oh, that sounds really great, but what's practical? Right. It's like, well, let's, let's see, let's see what we can do. Yeah. So these internal containers are great on their own. So you have all the silicone lids, those pop right on and you Mm. can store food uh, in the fridge. You can, you know, throw something small for your kids when you're on the road. Great to keep kids from being hangry, right? We, yeah. I love that it's a cup too, because most things are about a cup. Like most servings of yeah. anything is like a cup. Right. So Or a half a cup, half a cup of and, nuts or berries or right. fruit. Right. Yeah. So you're portioning out, you know, if you're a and macro. And these don't rust. Like you could leave liquid in these for days and they won't rust, These right? are These are highly corrosion resistant. It's, cool. you know, it's a stainless steel 304. So it's corrosion resistant. And then these are our two cup containers. So a little bit larger. Larger, um, but all work so that you can take and whatever you decide to create for the day. If you want a giant salad, then you have an Just empty one container. Big container. Yeah. If you're even if you're going out to pick up food, you're going out and you're like, I can't make it myself today. If you have this with you, if you bring your own, then you can go to one of the you know one of the mar- natural food markets and go to their cold bar or hot bar and say hey put my salmon and my salad in here and that's one less container that sure. you're 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 putting your food into contact yeah. with but also you know then disposing of and it I love up- I love that you can cook in this thing yeah how does the yeah. plastic come off so like oh, that it just pops down yeah so and then there's this, this mass this design. is a big vessel yeah this is over like eight could, and a you, half cups of food you could fit like a family meal in here this is like a six person meal totally right yeah 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 absolutely i love this oh wow. i can't wait I to have one i feel like we should <laughs> i want one <laughs> what's the brand is it cutco or i feel oh, like yeah, this is like knives. a qvc commercial <laughs> you guys not only are you going to get the two piece <laughs> but you're also going to get the other two piece that for looks free, just, right. just as shiny and it's for free okay no i mean we're just having fun on the show but <laughs> but i have to say like i know how much effort and energy and heart you've put into this i know what it means to you It's been my honor to spotlight this for you because I love connecting people to missions and messages that I believe in. Mm. And ever since I first met you and just how much you've been a supporter to Wellness Force and our missions are so aligned. So tell people where they can go to order one of these and also tell people after after they order, tell people what you believe wellness really is. Hmm. Yeah, well, the easy one. <laughs> the easy one is go to revessel.com. There you can pre-order, you can learn a little bit more about what we're setting out to do. We're we're having so much fun working with starting with local chefs but developing recipes that are curated for this particular product. And, you know, just giving people access. Yeah, these are tools. This is kind of bridging the gap to get people closer to where the source of their food, yeah. putting in real food, getting them closer, get, empowering them to, to go out and pursue their passion and do it in, in an optimal way, doing it with optimal health. And um, I, th- I think that's what wellness is, is making choices and, and choosing things that serve you, choosing relationships, choosing relationships with food, choosing relationships with with people, choosing relationships with products that are serving you, you yeah. know? This could that that I'll leave it at that. Thank you for this reminder of the power to choose. revessel.com, r e v e s s e l.com. There's a brand new video up there that will really give you 
a, a profound message of like what this means to the world. This is way bigger than just food storage. Jessica, thank you for coming on the show. Josh. Thanks for supporting Wellness Force. Yeah. And thank you for being a force of wellness yourself. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, you guys. Uh, remember, just type in Revessel and then you can get uh, one for free. We'll, we'll give it away a week after the show comes out. If you're watching this on Facebook, thank you for being here. And if you're listening on the show, make sure you go to the show notes because we're going to be talking about Jessica and Ree Vessel at wellnessforce.com forward slash group. And just check her out. This, this company, I haven't seen a product like this. And I thought I was being healthy until literally this morning, I realized that my glass containers have plastic lids. So we can always choose something different. So thank you, Jessica. I for think that you're reminder. highly evolved, Josh. And that, <laughs> that awareness is, is pretty spectacular. Thanks for listening to the show, my friend. Everything you learned on this podcast starts with your morning practices. So from over 300 world-class guests, we pulled together six simple yet powerful morning practices down into a 21-minute system guaranteed to increase your vibration and the way that you feel every day. Get this free powerful guide over at wellnessforce.com forward slash M21. And if you love this show, share it with somebody. Share it with somebody that you love or that you care about. You can support the show easily by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes. Just go to wellnessforce.com forward slash review. Or if you're on your phone, just tap it, hit the link in purple that says review this podcast. And the journey does not stop here. We're continuing this discovering process in our private Facebook group over at wellnessforce.com forward slash group. You can be a part of it. You already are. All you have to do is join us at wellnessforce.com forward slash group and I will welcome you at the door. Now go out into your life and live your life well. And until I see you again real soon, I'm wishing you love and wellness.